Hello and welcome to another episode of the Making It in Asheville podcast. Uh, this is your friendly neighborhood podcast where each week we sit down with a Asheville-based uh, small business owner, entrepreneur, community leader and ask them what they're making in Asheville and how they are making it in Asheville. And this week we sit down with Matt Raker, executive director of Mountain BizWorks. Mountain BizWorks has come up on the podcast probably more than any other local resource. They do funding and education for um, WNC-based businesses. Um, and it's honestly really great to have them in the community. And so Mountain BizWorks has been leading a lot of the financial charge, um, how, to, how to solve for this um, new way that Asheville uh, will have to, um, I guess, get comfortable with and um, move forward with. And so uh, Matt Raker, executive director, has been in the role for, I think, this January coming up. It'll be five years. Um, has been in comparable roles, um, both at Mountain BizWorks and in other WNC-based um, community economic development type um, organizations. And so the conversation, um, I want to lead with the lead. Uh, I try to keep it focused, the scope of what we could talk about uh, about when thinking about Asheville and Western North Carolina based recovery. Scope could be massive. This conversation, we tried to focus on small businesses specifically um, and support for small businesses, small business owners. Um, The highlights look like uh, Mountain BizWorks has a three-pronged approach. They want to lead with information. They want to um, follow with economic disaster bridge loans, and they have an incredible resource um, that is on the show notes page, and we talk about throughout the conversation. And then their third uh, pillar and hope is to um, create a mechanism for emergency bridge grant funding, um, big difference between loan funding and grant funding. And so we talk through that. Um, conversation is powerful. Conversation is needed. Um, I have a ton of notes. Those notes I'm not going to talk about necessarily right now. They are available on making it in Asheville.com under um, the uh, episode number. It'll be on the homepage links uh, if you're listening to this in real time. Otherwise, wherever you're listening to it, I'll have an immediate link to the episode for you. Um, without further ado, let's get into this conversation. And let's start talking about um, what's available to small business owners locally. And if you are hoping to be of use to the community and to the region, you want to support small business, um, it looks like there's going to be two main ways to do it. Uh, All that and more discussed in this episode. So let's shoot into it now. So thank you for joining me, uh, Matt Raker, Executive Director of Mountain BizWorks, I suspect in the future, I'll I'll have done an intro so we don't have to necessarily get into the details. Imagine details have been delivered. I mean, perhaps like what is the soundbite if there were one that you would want to start a conversation that people who care about Asheville based, Western North Carolina based businesses, like what would you want them to hear from Mountain BizWorks today? Well, our community has been hammered, you know, really, really hit hard um, by Helene. We are, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, this community is so special, you know, how, how people are coming together, you know, to support each other, um, both on the individual level, as well as thinking about how we rebuild all that's so unique, you know, to us. Um, And, you know, we need all the friends we can get, you know, um, from, from, you know, around the country, from around the state, um, I think it's, it's been so incredible. We've already seen so much of that, but that's so helpful. And so, so, uh, encouraging because this, this is just a, you can't, can't put into words yet the level of impact, you know, that, that we've seen uh, in Asheville and across Western North Carolina. Yeah. If there were any potentially, um, like bullets on impact or a, a, a attempts to quantify the level of disruption, has anything stood out to you as like, um, you know, the thing you would say when a, when a friend calls, like, here's what we're dealing with in Western North Carolina. You know, it's really difficult to boil it down to, to bullet points. Um, um, but what, you know, we, we've got, um, 
there's impacts of different levels, you know, across, you know, the, the, the region. I and mean, we, we know for one, um, the timing of this, you know, couldn't have been worse as we enter the fall yeah. kind of tour season where, you know, uh, of course, hospitality and tourism is, is one of our big drivers uh, in our in our region. Uh, and it's the season where so many of our hospitality businesses get into the black, 100%. you know, yeah. you know, and so we're going to lose that whole season. Um, so on top of all the direct kind of impacts they had, you know, we're also losing that whole season. And, that, and we know that will also then kind of drag into next year um, as well. Um, the infrastructure, you know, over a hundred bridges, you know, um, DOT has said have been destroyed um, and will have to be rebuilt. There's so many roads that, that are out um, as well um, that are going to have to, of course, you know, the big ones being I-40 West, you know, we're looking at a year plus to get that reopened. Yeah. Um, I-26 North, yeah. you know, um, a long time to get that reopened. Yeah. And so I, I, that, I think that's, I'm going to pin it there because that is, you know, the impact is, I've been saying incalculable, right? It's, yep. it's, it's impossible to even try and wrangle. Um, and so the aperture through which you could attempt to talk about uh, making sense of what the next steps look like is uh, massive. And so yep. th this conversation, we're going to try and punch in tight. I know we're, uh, you know, not unlimited with time. And so the aperture I want to try and talk about is small business in Western North Carolina, specifically Asheville, but small business generally, um, and what specifically what resources exist today. And yeah. then you might see, you know, um, coming down the pike, uh, if you have any kind of color on what's coming up. So the impact is incredible. The 100 bridges, the water with no real timeline on when water is coming back, right? So our number one export is is water. Um, and when do we have that again, right? So if it's not hospitality, it's maybe beverage um, yep. as like the flag we fly mm -hmm. as a as a community. Holy smokes. Um, the the dot, 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 question mark, question mark there is um, alarming in a word. So when thinking about resources for specifically small businesses, small business owners in Asheville, um, what are the what are the mountain biz works uh, like I guess a bit like resources, primary resources? What are the things that you want people to know exist right now already? Well, I think first I want to start Tony with just saying, you know, we, we've got you know three primary recovery pillars that we're focused on. Perfect. Um and not so, and, and we're working to get some of these stood up, you know, so not everything's available day one, but we want to know folks know this, this recovery will take some time and, and there will be more resources coming out, you know, than what's mm -hmm. been available day one. But we're, we're, we're really focused on first having really good information. So, you know, on our website, mountainbizworks.org, you can go to the main website. There's an alert banner at the top. It says mm -hmm. lean resources, recovery resources. Folks can go there and kind of get a summary of everything we'll talk about here today, but like, you know, what, what are some key first steps you need to do for your business and what's available now? So that's, you know, mountainbizworks.org. You can find, find that. And we've got um, a number of partners across the region uh, and, and staff here on, on our team that are all around making sure that we help folks be able to navigate what resources are available. And we'll talk about some, but the, the specific ones that are available in specific business may vary. So, um, I say there are there are people available, whether it's um, through Mountain BizWorks, through the Business Recovery Center, you know, at the at the Asheville Chamber. You can go in person, you know, there. And, and we've got folks there. SBTDC has folks there. SBA has folks there. FEMA is there sometimes. So anyways, a number of different resources you can go talk to in person and kind of help navigate what's going on. So that that's one. Um, then there's what we're calling kind of emergency bridge loans. Okay. We'll come back to that. And then the, and the third one is emergency grants. Um, so grant support, because we, you know, um, lo loans are really important, but we also know we need to have some grant resources and, yeah. and we're working hard on that. Um, yeah. um, 
we we were this week we, we, you know we're we're deploying um uh, some small grants that we you know to some of the folks that we've been working with a lot you know kind of directly but we're also partnering with a lot of folks to, to raise more you know and, and I think there's a number of organizations across the region that have stood up programs that are all super important so you know um, whether it's the various arts programs or, or different things I think you know and again on our resource page you can find a list of those okay. but we know that we need a bigger program as well and we're working really hard on that yeah. Um, I think and, key, 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 yeah. Excuse me. Key differentiation between um, bridge loans, emergency bridge loans, and emergency grant funding is yeah. payment terms. I imagine grants go money moves one way, one direction. You get it. You have to apply That's for right. it. There's some level of diligence done on who's going to get grant money. It's but it's it is no strings attached. It goes to you. And bridge loans right now, as far as my awareness, is they're fairly fast and fairly favorable in terms of the terms tied right. to the dollars that show up. So exceptionally yeah. low interest rates for the current market um, yeah. and some level of time horizons that that changes, but it gets you from today or a week from now um, yeah. to the next time you need to raise money or sort things out. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about the, the bridge loan. So, okay. um, um, Monday, uh, last Monday, yep. October 7th, we launched the WNC Strong mm -hmm. Helene Business Recovery Fund. Um, and so those are really designed to be that emergency bridge loans up to $100,000, like you said, Tony, to help those businesses that, that need some funds to be able to meet those immediate needs mm -hmm. and get towards some longer term recovery resources. And those could come in a variety of ways. It could be some FEMA disaster grants that they get to help pay for kind of specific physical damages and cleanup and whatnot that folks may have. That would be the SBA disaster loans, um, which which we can talk more about the terms on those. Um, it would be really important for folks, um, but we know that there's gonna be a, some, there could be some delays in folks getting access to those mm -hmm. um, just because of the volume and, and some other things. Sure. Um, it could be insurance payments. So anyway, we know there's, there's longer term resources that will become available, it takes some time. So these. These are to help those folks keep their key employees on the payroll, you know, to help with cleanup costs, to help repurchase inventory if they need to, you know, pay their mortgage or whatever those kind of immediate needs are. These immediate bridge loans are really designed to, to help with, with that. So that's the WNC Strong Helene Business Recovery Fund. And again, that's 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 a program that Mountain BizWorks um, is the administrator of. We've got a bunch of partners uh, on that, but we're administering that. Okay. So you can go to our website and find details on that. And so I have some details in front of me that I'll read and just tell me if anything has changed since the Instagram post about it. Um, but up to $100,000 in funding, up to a six-year payment term, the first year, 12 months, would be a 1% interest-only payment um, with a 6% rate for regular payments after year one requires some level of a personal guarantee yep. um, and is secured by business assets. So, That's right. um, and then there's, you know, a second page, I think uh, uh, decisions aiming for a seven to 10 day timeline, which seems exceptionally fast for mm -hmm. traditional funding um, designed to bridge SBA, FEMA insurance and other long-term recovery uh, funding streamlined online, no credit score minimum, no closing costs, no prepayment penalty, um, and then it's subject to commercial collection processes. The thing that stands out is if someone's assets were devastated in this, like how, how does someone whose inventory got crushed or the place where their inventory was or their, you know, their business, um, re relied on physical things and those physical things are damaged, um, or destroyed or missing totally. How does a business like that get money today? Is that grants versus anything that would be collateralized debt? Well, um, I think you're going to have to use a combination. You know, mm -hmm. uh, well, certainly pursue any grants that you can. Okay. Um, um, uh, you know, and, and we're working to raise more grants. Those take time to pull together. So, that, you know, so, um, there's some available now, but there'll be more coming. Sure. Um, uh, but I think they're not going to, they, they will not, cover your full need most likely mm -hmm. you know i think for, for a lot of folks you're going to have to have you'll probably have some additional impacts that you got to cover 
Um, and so you may need to look to some of the recovery loans, like whether it's our immediate bridge loans or or then rolling that into an SBA disaster loan um, uh, as, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, the, you know, I think folks need to kind of think about what is the, what does their recovery and reopening plan look like? Mm -hmm. um, and start to get a, a plan in place for that. And, and like, we, like we, we were talking to one of our businesses who lost their building, gone, mm -hmm. you know, um, got wiped away, all their inventory, all their equipment, you know, um, so what, what do they do? You know, and so thinking about, all right, what's a, you know, they're, they're very committed to getting reopened. You know, what, where's a new, at least temporary interim location that they can work out of, mm -hmm. you know, start to reorder some of their inventory and get that up and going so they can get their business going yeah. again. Yeah. So they'll be prioritizing some of these funds towards those things to help yeah. get at least a base of their business operating again and yeah. then grow from there. Yeah. And then as a, as a, you know, the exact opposite, right? So let's say you are not uh, inventory focused necessarily or physical product focused, but you rely yeah. on the fact that millions of people come to Asheville every year to like look at leaves and drink beer and, and hike. And those people might not be showing up. And so now you have what might be a demand side uh, catastrophe uh, yeah. for your business. Um, I guess part of it is like, what is the application look like and yeah. you know uh one one person one business owner who reached out is like i think i have to fundamentally change my business to yeah. survive a non-tourist driven economy for whatever the foreseeable future looks like yeah well firstly the um the wnc strong bridge loans we're looking at how your business was performing pre-helene you know so so we realize that right now in post Helene, it's going to look very different. But so how you qualify is, you know, hey, if you were a, a sound business beforehand and you've got a reasonable, you know, idea of how you might be able to get back at some point, mm -hmm. you know, you'll be able to qualify for something through through that program. And in there, we we encourage folks to, you know, put if they're pivoting, totally, that's fine. That's great. And some folks can use these funds to help them, you know, pivot. Um, you can also use the funds. Also, if you're just like, you know, we're going to have a revenue gap of some period of time, and we need to just use this to help cover some of that, you know, to bridge us until revenue yeah. comes back or until we get some of the, again, the larger, longer term recovery funds. Heard. Okay. Um, and then just to, there's a whole bunch of acronyms that I wrote down in preparation for the call. So SBA, Small Business um you know, association, I guess, of the United States, right? So it's a federal level SBA. And then are you, am I right that you are, the, you are like a local SBA lender or am I mixing words up? And then the only other uh, acronyms that were new to me is SBTDC and then yep. EDPNC. So Economic Development Partnership of North Carolina was the last one. The other one I couldn't find what the acronym actually stood for, but they both yep. seem to be doing great work for North Carolina businesses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and are, are they all facilitating SBA loans or is it a different mechanism in, in some of these different um, regional or local uh, funding solutions? Yep. So the SBA disaster loans um, that you can you you can get assistance on both physical damage and what they call economic injury. So like lost revenue and uh, those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, those. SBA disaster loans you apply directly to the SBA, okay. so they they don't work through any other lenders or intermediaries like ourselves or others for those. Those are one hundred percent direct through the SBA. If you need help with your application process, you know, or like pulling it together, you know, um, those other entities ourselves, SBCDC, EDP, and C can help guide and help navigate someone through the process. You okay. know of like what's going to be required uh, if, if what, what can you do if your tax returns or your business financials were in your building that got washed away, you know, sure. there are some, there are some solutions that we can talk folks through what some of those options are. So, so the other, the other acronyms on there are more helping guide folks, but the okay. loans are directly through SBA. SBA. Okay. And then your WNC strong Helene, fund is not SBA backed. That is a, right. your own fundraising campaign to support that. 
That's right. So um, that's those are offered through um, Mountain BizWorks. Think of that as the the local and statewide response. Okay. Um, so there's a um, we have a, there's a statewide partner called the Golden Leaf Foundation. Yeah. A great foundation is economic development work across um, North Carolina, um, and they committed seven and a half million dollars um, to the fund to help get it off the ground. We've got another. We're up to about 11 million right now in, in commitments, and we're hoping to grow it to 50 million um, total um, okay. on there. And I'll just tell folks that you know, we're we're doing that as quick as we can. Yep. Um, we're trying to make decisions as fast as we can. Um, we know that the level of demand is unprecedented. Yeah, in, in, well. in, in one week, we've already got 425 applications, totaling over 28 million in requests. Wow. Um, and those and those businesses are estimating an uninsured uh, economic loss to their business of seventy million. So tremendous impacts um, just from those four hundred twenty five. And we know we know there are thousands of these. Uh, so that, that, to me, that that's the headline, and I thank you for sharing that. And now I'm going to flip the entire conversation quickly. So you're trying to raise, let's say, seventy million, a hundred million um, yeah. people. Like I feel like. Uh, one of the things I wanted to look at was timelines, right? So we have 2024, we have this 2025 that's going to look unlike any year, uh, full calendar year in Western North Carolina that probably ever, maybe since post other massive flood, but to a scale that, you know, makes the other ones feel silly to even bring up in conversation. And then we have like, until the rest of 2020, 2030 ish, I would say that the rebuilding reimagination of western north carolina is a decade or decades long conversation at this point so i guess two immediate questions when thinking about like this timeline thing is i do feel that there is some level of urgency for raising money from people who do not live in the region and and pulling on some level of sympathy and support and so knowing that some folks in the network have the ability to call on folks who want to donate or invest or something and support um, is what look like some of the best options. Is it connecting them to you or to the um, Golden Leaf Foundation? What does an investor or a donate, like is that money donated to Golden Leaf? Is that, is that a fund ex like experience where they're getting part of the return on money that's being donated and earning some of that 6% um, over six years? Where does big money show up in Western North Carolina to help with some of this rebuild? We are calling for, we want to see a grants program that really meets the moment. Mm -hmm. And and we think here at BizWorks, it needs to be at least $20 million in that pool. So that's a big, that's a big lift. Mm -hmm. um, we are leaning in with a number of partners. Um, so if people are, I think, really want to show up and help support the region. You know, I think that's, that's number one to think about is how we capitalize that pool. Mm -hmm. um, and they can, they can reach out directly to Mountain BizWorks. Um, we're not, we're, we're just about to kind of put together a facility around that. It may end up living in another apartment. We'll make sure that it all, it all gets there uh, to the right, to the right folks. Um, and then we're raising 50 million in the recovery loans. Mm -hmm. Start, they're starting with these uh, emergency up to hundred thousand dollar bridge loans. We know those will, will have to transition as folks kind of get a picture of what their longer term recovery needs are. Yeah. We'll probably have larger recovery loans available through the WNC strong fund as well. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're engaging partners on those and those are, that's, they're providing us 0% money to build out, that recovery lending pool mm -hmm. there. Um, and then as those loans get repaid by businesses, as they get reopened and paid down the loans, we send all that loan capital back to the, to the funders. So that's another really good way. If you're like, Hey, I've got a million dollars, go take this, go put it to work. And then, you know, and then a year or two years, three years, once it's all back, you know, give me what's back. And, you know, there'll be some losses. We know not everyone's going to be reopened, Yeah, but we, th we think it will see at least, you know, eighty to ninety percent, you know, repayment rates um, mm -hmm. overall on, on this on this program. And so, uh, someone who wants to, uh, I'm making words up. If someone wants to participate in the disaster recovery loans, yeah. that is a uh, 
you know, investment decision that is like in participating in any other fund or investment protocol, except much lower return rate. If someone's going to invest in the grant, would that be considered on a tax basis, like a donation? Yeah, so, that's a that's right. so that is a tax write-off. Hey, I'm going to throw 50000 into yep. this nonprofit, and this yep. makes me sleep a little better at night. I'm helping the people of Western North Carolina. So yep. different uh, financial engines for those that's two right. ways to serve the region. Yeah. Yeah. And there, there will be, you know, you're not going to get a big return. Sure. The, you can, hopefully you'll get your, most money of your guy. money. Back, you know? <laughs> yeah. But, I, I, uh, but, but a lot of these folks are invested in the long-term yeah. prosperity of the region. And so that we're going to, yeah. that's what we want. We want to rebuild that. There, there will be some return generating things too, to come that we could, that'd be maybe another conversation, but there's really interesting things on that. I, I'd be excited to hear that. And I, you know, I, I think it's, I'm thinking about it as like a tax year. So like if you're going to grant money, you can That's do 2024 right. tax year loss. Yep. Uh, you want to put the money towards the investment pool. Over the next yep. five years, you might be writing a loss for whatever uh, your yep. investment was in that. Yeah. Yeah. Ho hopefully you're more than like 10% of your investment, you know. Heard and this is not financial advice. <laughs> like we don't, we don't play. I don't play that uh, on TV yeah, that's right. either. <laughs> that's right. But um, okay, so I want to respect your time. Let me just quickly read through my notes. Um, there are a couple resources sent to me in email. It was like an individual based best steps and uh, re re recommended road. Are these documents yeah. public facing? Can I list them on our website for folks to like in the notes from this conversation? Yes. Okay. Yeah. On like on what to do and where to what go. What to do exactly as a Absolutely. business owner. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm going to have as much of this distilled as possible for people who listen to the conversation. And then I guess I'll, I'll end with one question and potentially if you'll indulge a, a follow-up question. What do you see as the number one concern for small businesses in uh, Asheville and WNC generally? What's the number one concern from where you're uh, looking? I mean, I think getting some of the, uh, the grants, I think getting grant support um, so that it's these businesses don't have to take up big loans. A lot, a lot still have pandemic recovery, you know, COVID loans already. So I think, I think that is a real need, you know, for us to really have a recovery and not, not just have to mortgage our future, you know, further um, uh, on that. And then what do you see as the, uh, number one, I'm trying to find the right language for it, but like most hopeful realization over the last two weeks and change. Um, what's leaving you feeling hopeful right now? Yeah, well, I mean, we, we are a resilient, you know, community and how we've come together. Um, you know, we're already starting to see a lot of progress, which is very heartening. We know there's a long road, you know, so it's, it's you know, the, the response phase, I think we're doing great. There's going to be a longer term economic recovery. So it's not, you know, I think we got to prepare ourselves. This is going to be one, two, three years of recovery efforts, especially when we think about all the infrastructure stuff. But hey, uh, City of Asheville Water, you know, you mentioned, I mean, that's one of the biggest things. And we know we've got that flowing in the pipes. Mm -hmm. Again, it's starting to repressurize the system. So we're, uh, that's huge that we're, that we're going to be closer to getting that, you know, um, up and running again. And I think that'll make a big, big, big difference for us to get some level of um, getting to where we can really start the recovery, not just as immediate kind of response phase going. Yeah. I'm heartened by the, um, by the community, by people's ability and willingness to show up and, you know, with strong backs and chainsaws and then also folks trying to, you know, uh, I would say, push out the horizon line and think about what the future is actually going to look like. Um, and I'm grateful for your time today. I know you have a, a million conversations need having with business owners in the region and thank you for making time. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. And let's, let's, uh, let's keep talking as, uh, as we move through this process.